Now, in the lab upstairs, next week you'll see them, we have different flip-flops. We have something called JK flip-flop, SR flip-flop, T flip-flop, D flip-flops. So we need to understand what they look like. On paper, when we draw them, a D flip-flop will look like this. Has one input we call D, and it has two outputs, Q and the complement of Q. And it has a clock here to control it, CLK clock. So when the clock comes in, and sometimes the clock has to be on the rising edge, sometimes on the falling edge. What do you mean? Like the machine looks at the, on the rising edge when the clock goes from zero to one. That's the rising edge. Mm -hmm. The falling edge when the clock goes from one to zero. How do we know if this one actually on the rising edge versus the falling edge? The falling edge, this will look like this. And the clock will have a bubble here. And that's the clock. That says that's working on the falling edge. This is working on the rising edge. There is no circle here. So you need the clock to go to one for it to work. This we need the clock to go to zero for it to work from one to zero. The reason they call them rising edge and falling edge, when you look at a clock, the clock looks like this. That's what the clock looks like. So this is the rising, you go into one, and this is the falling. Rising, falling, rising, falling. So as the clock goes to rising, if you have this flip-flop, that's when the changes will happen. This one, if you have that, nothing happens till the clock goes from one to zero on that edge. So all the stuff you're doing that time, nothing will happen till the clock goes from one to zero. Then it will happen. And then it will stay the same till it goes from one to zero. It will happen again. It will stay the same till it goes one to zero. What makes it change though? Well, you're gonna see the inside in a minute. So now, what is actually the truth table for that? Here is a D flip-flop. D, Q, and Q next. The asterisk means next, the next state. So this is the next state. What will happen next? If D is zero and Q was a zero, so if the previous state was zero and your input was zero, your output, the next state will be zero. If this is zero and this was one, so initially this was a one, you make a zero, the clock comes in, this one says your output is zero. If D is one, Q is zero, so the previous state was zero, now D is one, then you end up with one. And the last one, when D is one, Q is one, you end up with the one. If you look closely at that truth table, what do you notice about Q next, the next state? It's the same as D, right? So you can summarize that table. It says, you know what, it doesn't really matter what Q is. If D is zero, you're getting a zero. If D is one, you're getting a one. That's what a D flip-flop. D flip-flop. What's the D stands for? Why they call it D flip-flop? Data. D is for data, flip-flop. This flip-flop follows the data. If the data is zero, I don't know why I have cat there. Data flip-flop. If the data is zero, your output or the next state is zero. If data is one, the next state is one. That's the truth table for it. Not from the graph, but that's the truth table. Now, if you want to see what the inside of it looks like. So that'll always be true just like that? Correct, yes. Okay. All the flip-flop works that way. They come pre-programmed, designed to run that way. Is that only for the going up platform? Oh, no, down or up, doesn't matter. Yep. Okay. So let me do a time and diagram for that. Uh, 
I'll make a clock here. Well, I should have got a ruler while I was there. Quickly. Like if I try to, to graph this, and it doesn't matter what the next state is. Let's say this is going to work on the rising edge. This is the part I hate. I go blind with it. Try to make it nice and neat. Let me actually, I'm going to make this a rising I'm going to mark the rising edge because I'm going to work on the rising edge. I'm going to assume it's a rising edge flip-flop. There we go. Okay. How about this? We'll do this. So I can look and see when it went to one there. The rising edge again. So the top is my clock. I guess one of the clock it looks like I have a long signal here, but that's a booboo -boo there. It should all be the same width. That's my clock. It looks like I use three instead of a two. That's the only one. But usually a clock, everything is the same. So I count it wrong. So this is the clock. CLK clock. And let's make a value for D, the data. I'll use the red color for D. And I'll mix and match. I don't have to stay with the clock. I'm going to make the data go 1, 0 anytime I feel like it. That's the data. Let's say this is my data. I made sure intentionally it's up and down, not exactly the same time. So what is the next state is going to be? What's Q is going to be? The output. If I have a clock working on the rising edge, and Usually when you get the flip-flop, you'll see there's a set or reset. So you can start your flip-flop either with one or zero. So you can put a high voltage on the set, it starts with one, or put a high voltage on the zero, it starts at zero. So you can start anywhere you want. So let's say I'm going to start minus zero. There's my zero. I see the clock going to one. See that zero to one on the rising edge? What was the value of D? One. Zero. This is zero, that's one. D was zero. That means your output's gonna stay zero till the next clock. There's the next clock. Doesn't matter, that went to one, it doesn't matter, we don't see it. Till the clock goes zero to one, it says D as what? One, that goes to one now. And it will stay one till the next clock. That's the next clock. 
Now it says D, here comes the clock. Zero to one, it says D as what? One, we'll stay at one till the next clock. Look, look what happened to D here, went down, back up, we don't care, didn't see it. Only sees it when the clock goes from zero to one. Now right here the clock goes from zero to one again, it sees D as what? Zero, that comes down to zero. The clock goes zero to one, it sees D as what? One, it goes back to one, stays as one. The clock goes zero to one, it sees D as one, continue with one. And that's my output for the clock. This is if it works on the rising edge, clock. If your clock works on the falling edge, I didn't mark the falling edge, because I wasn't planning on using it. So let's say the clock is a falling edge clock. Then I gotta look now at this time. It's a different answer I'm gonna get. That's the falling edge. 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 And that's the falling edge. And so this is Q again. Let's assume it's target at zero. And here's the falling edge. It sees the clock as being what? One. It goes to one, and it will stay one. Here's the falling edge. It sees the data, I mean. It sees the data as one, stays one. Till the next falling edge. It sees the data. Was this arising? Yeah. It sees the data now. Going to one, stays at one. It's, uh, where is it? Stays the day as one, stays one. Zero. Now it sees zero. It goes to zero. The last one it sees what? One. one. That's for this one. So if the clock works on the falling edge, that's what the clock, that's what your output Q will look like. Nothing happens, it follows the data, but also, see if, if it just follows the data, your output should be just like that. We don't want it to look like that. Because sometimes you get that surge in energy, that surge in light, you hit, your house got hit by lightning, that surge in the voltage there. I don't want that to affect my design. This one says, oh, I didn't see it because it wasn't during that clock time. So this will synchronize every single thing to work at the same time, instead of just flickering anytime it wants to. And usually what will happen in real life, actually, there's the other issue we're gonna discuss to go from zero to one, that time here, see this to go zero to one? That's an issue for us. It doesn't just jump zero to time, that's your delay. And right here, to drop from one to zero, it's gonna take some time. That's another delay. And to go zero to one, that's a delay. These are all delays. Same thing right here, to go zero to one, we got a delay. One to zero, delay. Zero to one. So during that, those boxes I put there, you don't want to read the value. You don't want to look at the value because you have to give your device a chance to go back to one or go back to zero. And we're getting better with the equipment. We, it used to be like this, the, to make it go zero to one. Now we improved a few years back to something like this. Now we can make it look like this. Almost straight up there, almost. We're getting better and better. That delay is getting less and less and less every single year. Every two years. Yeah, every two years actually increased by half the size. That's the rule of thumb. Yep. Double the speed every two years. That's what we've been using for the rule. So that delay actually gets half and half every two years. Will we ever get it to be perfect? Probably not. All we're ever do is cut it in half, you still never get there. Yep. Probably not. We don't want it anyway. 
get a little time there, that little delay there. You and I might not be able to calculate that time, but probably not. So we're going to look more at flip-flops next time. That's just introduction to one flip-flop, the D flip-flop. We got a lot more. That's the easiest one, the data flip-flop.